The last identity we'll cover is the half-angle identity, where we'll express the cosine and sine of theta over 2 in terms of the cosine and sine of theta. We'll prove these identities algebraically and then geometrically. To find the identity for sine theta over 2, we'll start with one of the double angle identities for cosine 2 theta, the one in terms of sine theta. Cosine 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. This identity is true for any angle theta, so we'll rewrite it in terms of a smaller angle theta that's half the size. So we know that cosine theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. It's the double angle identity written where the largest angle is theta instead of 2 theta. Let's rearrange to get theta over 2 on the left side. 2 sine squared theta over 2 equals 1 minus cosine theta. Divide both sides by 2 and we get sine squared theta over 2 equals 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. To find sine theta over 2 not squared, we take the square root of both sides. Sine theta over 2 equals plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. The plus or minus sign depends on the quadrant in which theta over 2 lies. To find the identity of cosine theta over 2, we'll start with a double angle identity for cosine 2 theta in terms of cosine theta. Cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Again, this identity is true for all values of theta, so to suit our own purposes, we'll divide the angles in half again. The relationship still holds. Cosine theta equals 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1. Rearranging to get cosine theta over 2 on the left side yields 2 cosine squared theta over 2 equals 1 plus cosine theta. Divide both sides by 2 and take the square root. Cosine theta over 2 equals plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. Again, the plus or minus sign depends on the quadrant in which theta over 2 lies. Interestingly, the identities are the same except for the positive negative sign. And also, interestingly, they both depend only on the cosine of theta. You don't need to know sine theta. Let's try these identities out with theta equals 5 pi over 3. So we'll find the cosine and sine of half of 5 pi over 3 using the half angle identities. Half of pi over 3 radians is 5 pi over 6. And of course we already know the cosine and sine of 5 pi over 6 are negative large and positive small. Negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. See TR-15 for a review of these values. But we'll use the half angle identities to verify that they work. Sine first. Sine theta over 2 equals plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. Cosine 5 pi over 3 equals 1 half. That's in yellow. 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half. Divided by 2 is 1 fourth. Square root of 1 fourth is plus or minus 1 half. We'll use the positive alternative since we expect the sine of 5 pi over 6 to be positive. So, using just the cosine of 5 pi over 3, we found the sine of the angle having half its measure, 5 pi over 6. Now let's find cosine of 5 pi over 3 divided by 2, which equals plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine 5 pi over 3 divided by 2. Again, cosine 5 pi over 3 equals 1 half. Plugging this into the equations yields plus or minus square root of 3 fourths. Distributing the radical, we get plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. We'll choose the negative alternative, since 5 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2, where angles have negative cosines. So, the identities work. Let me prove it graphically. We'll need to use the inscribed angle theorem, which I haven't proven or shown in this series. You may have encountered it in your geometry course. I'll quickly share the theorem and prove only the piece we'll need to prove the half-angle identity. Consider a circle centered on the origin. We usually consider unit circles, but this circle could be of any radius, and the proof will still work. An angle in standard position is called a central angle because the vertex of the angle is at the center of the circle. An angle like this, whose vertex is on the circumference of the circle, is called an inscribed angle. Each angle subtends an arc length. Now let's consider the case where the two angles subtend the same arc length. 
The inscribed angle theorem states that the inscribed angle is one-half the central angle. So if the central angle were pi over 3 radians, or 60 degrees, then the inscribed angle would be half that measure, which is pi over 6 radians, or 30 degrees. I'll prove this for the special case where the angle vertices are collinear with an endpoint of the subtended arc length, because that's all we'll need to prove the half angle identity. This triangle has two legs, whose length is the radius of the circle, r, so it's an isosceles triangle. The base angle theorem, covered in TR-07, says that these opposite angles must be congruent. We'll call them alpha. Since the interior angles of a triangle sum to pi radians, or 180 degrees, this yellow angle, gamma, must be pi minus 2 alpha radians. And since it's supplementary to the central angle, beta, gamma must also be pi minus beta. So these terms are congruent. 2 alpha equals beta. So the inscribed angle is half the central angle. And now, using this, we can prove the half angle identity with a geometric construction. The proof is simplest on a unit circle, so now we'll consider the radius to be 1 as noted by the yellow radii. We're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle, so let's find the lengths of its sides. The short side is simple, it's sine theta. And this horizontal side on the bottom is simple. It's cosine theta plus 1, the radius on the left side of the y-axis. The hypotenuse is a little trickier. Let's divide the upper isosceles triangle into two congruent right triangles like this. Each has a hypotenuse of 1, the yellow radius, so these sides adjacent to the theta over 2 angles must be cosine theta over 2. So the full length of the upper triangle's hypotenuse is 2 cosine theta over 2. Now let's apply the Pythagorean theorem as yellow squared equals blue squared plus red squared. 2 cosine theta over 2 squared equals 1 plus cosine theta squared plus sine squared. The left side, when squared, becomes 4 cosine squared theta over 2. 1 plus cosine theta squared, when expanded, becomes 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta, and the red is still simply sine squared theta. On the right side, we have the sum of cosine squared theta and sine squared theta, which we can replace with 1. This leaves 4 cosine squared theta over 2 equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. Let's divide everybody by 2. Hmm, let's divide through by 2 again. Cosine squared theta over 2 equals 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2. Take the square root of both sides and we have the half angle identity for cosine. Cosine theta over 2 equals plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2. To find an expression for sine theta over 2 in terms of the cosine and sine of theta, we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem to this triangle. This vertical side we know is sine theta. This horizontal side must be 1 minus cosine theta, since this length is 1 and this length is cosine theta. Now, what's the hypotenuse? Let's consider this large right triangle with angle theta over 2 right here. We know this is a right triangle because of Thales' theorem, CTR-07z. So the side we want is opposite theta over 2, and the hypotenuse of the big triangle is the diameter of the circle, which is 2, since the radius is 1. So the last side we want is sine theta over 2 times the hypotenuse, which is 2. So 2 sine theta over 2. Applying the Pythagorean theorem, we get 2 sine theta over 2 squared equals sine squared plus 1 minus cosine theta squared. This is 4 sine squared theta over 2 equals sine squared theta plus, when we expand 1 minus cosine squared theta, we get 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. Again, we can collect cosine squared theta and sine squared theta and replace with 1. This leaves 4 sine squared theta over 2 equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. Divide both sides by 2, and divide again by 2, and we have sine squared theta over 2 equals 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. Take the square root of both sides, and sine theta over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. 
and we've proven the half-angle identities. Check with your instructor to see if you're expected to memorize these. That's all the identities in this series. There are some more important topics to cover, starting with the next video, TR-42, where we'll introduce variations to the graphs of the trig equations.